Hello, I am Mikhail Kielu, a cardiac electrophysiologist at Baylor College of Medicine. Today I will be talking about con uh, conduction system pacing for cardiac resynchronization therapy. I would like to thank the organizers of the Global Cardiovascular Forum for the kind invitation to participate. Here are my disclosures. The clinical scenario where significant right ventricular pacing is required include disease at the level of AV node or his bundle uh, disease or intra or infrahesian disease. Depending on the left ventricular ejection fraction and the nature of the conduction system disease, uh, treatment include pacemakers or cardiac resynchronization therapy with or without a defibrillator. For left ventricular ejection fraction less than 35% and a wide QRS, cardiac resynchronization therapy using biventricular pacing has been well established in a number of clinical trials, some of them listed on this slide, that include over 8,500 patients. Patients with uh, ca uh, cardiac resynchronization therapy using biventricular pace, uh, pacing uh, benefit uh, in terms of mortality, reduced heart failure hospitalization, improvement in quality of life and exercise capacity. However, depending on the measures, 20 to 40 percent of these patients do not respond to biventricular pacing. In the left ventricular ejection fraction range of 35 to 50 percent, Biventricular pacing has been shown to be um, superior to right ventricular pacing in a combined endpoint, including all cause death, heart failure hospitalization, and an index of adverse left ventricular remodeling. However, uh, biventricular pacing is not widely used outside of United States. So the question is, is there a better way uh, to pace the heart to uh, achieve cardiac resynchronization uh, therapy. And one potential candidate is conduction system pacing. So um, the question is whether improved left ventricular electrical and subsequently mechanical um, uh, synchrony uh, using a different pacing modality may result in improvement or reversal of cardiomyopathy and better outcomes for our patients. So let's examine the, uh, briefly the anatomy and the um, physiology of the conduction system pacing. On the left, there is a, a bovine heart, and uh, the conduction system of the left ventricle is uh, staying in India ink. You can see the broad left bundle branch, which branches in, se uh, in several branches, and the main ones um, uh, come close to the uh, anterior papillary muscle. Uh, there is one branch that activates the uh, interventricular septum and one branch that activates the inferior um, uh, septal area. On the right side, you can see a diagram of uh, activation of uh, uh, left ventricle from uh, explanted hearts from patients, uh, which included over 800 electrodes and um, mimicking the uh, anatomy of co the conduction system pacing, the earliest sites that are uh, activated include an area close to the anterior papillary muscle, an area uh, in, in the mid septum and the inferior septal area. Those area um, will lead to confluence within uh, 20, 30 milliseconds and then the electrical um, activation spreads toward the epicardium. Uh, and the rest of the left ventricle with the latest area to be activated uh, being the inferobasal septum. That leads to a uh, effective contraction of the left ventricle, shortening of the um, apical basal axis uh, combined with the torque motion of the apex and uh, the latest area uh, contracting being the basal, um, the basal, the basal of, uh, base, uh, of the left ventricle. So that is uh, illustrated here in, uh, with ultra-high frequency EKG. So on the left, you can see a narrow QRS. 
and the straight line indicates the activation almost simultaneously with the uh, right ventricle, the interventricular septum, and the left, uh, um, left ventricle. Also, the heat map indicates the conduction velocity of the uh, mass of the myocardium underneath each electrode, which you can see is quite uh, narrow in a narrow QRS. Now, uh, shifting our attention to the right um, side of the uh, slide where uh, a patient with lab under branch is indicated, you can see there is a significant delay between the uh, interventricular septum and the lateral wall of the left ventricle. Furthermore, the heat map indicates slow activation of the uh, left ventricular myocardium underneath each electrode uh, due to slow con uh, conduction from um, cell muscle to cell muscle. Now, when we perform left bundle branch pacing, uh, as we screw the lead deeper and deeper in the septum toward the left side of interventricular septum and close to the uh, left under branch block, you can see on the surface EKG that the QRS duration narrows uh, and then eventually becomes again wider due to introduction of uh, uh, right bundle branch morphology. With the high, ultra high frequency EKG, uh, underneath the EKG you can see that um, the, act, uh, the activation of the um, uh, interventricular septum and the left ventricular also becomes more synchronous as the uh, black line straightens and uh, also as you reach the um, uh, left under branch block uh, the heat map narrows indicating that you capture the conduction system uh, pacing of the heart on the left side and you have fast conduction velocity. This is uh, the uh, reestablishment of electrical synchrony um, is quite remarkable. Here is an example of one of my patients with his bundle uh, pacing. On the left side, you can see the EKG um, with uh, right ventricular pacing. He had high degree AV block requiring RV pacing um, that eventually led to uh, pacing induced cardiomyopathy. QRS duration is 190 milliseconds when paced. Uh, when placing uh, his bundle pacing lead, the QRS narrows to 82 milliseconds and the patient uh, ejection fraction recovered back to normal. Uh, next is an example of left bundle branch pacing, uh, a patient with uh, heart failure and uh, left bundle branch block with a QRS duration of 142 milliseconds. Uh, and then by placement of a left bundle branch pacing lead um, and non-selective capture of the left bundle branch, uh, QRS uh, narrowed to 100 milliseconds and uh, the patients uh, experienced significant improvement in uh, exercise capacity and quality of life. So now the uh, field of pacing uh, offers many um, options in terms of pacing from the most physiologic, his bundle uh, pacing through left under uh, pacing and then combination with biventricular pacing and then the least physiologic right uh, ventricular pacing. So the question is what is the best match between these different pacing um, strategies with different clinical scenarios to extract the best uh, benefits for our patients. This um, has been uh, explored in a few uh, small clinical trials, either with his bundle or left bundle branch block. Those trials um, uh, include only uh, anywhere between 29 patients and 167 patients, and there are encouraging results uh, in terms of uh, correcting um, surrogate parameters. However, we do not have uh, any data in terms of hard outcomes. However, there are a number of uh, large uh, planned or ongoing clinical trials that uh, are exploring hard endpoints such as death and heart failure, and uh, many of these trials are listed here. Our own trial uh, is left versus left, and um, together with Dr. Ellen Boger and Virginia Commonwealth University, we are fortunate to secure a 31 million grant for um, a patient center outcome research institute to perform this large randomized clinical trial in 2,136 patients in 55 U.S. centers and 10 Canada centers. Uh, patients with ejection fraction less than 35% will be randomized to a defibrillator with a his or left bundle branch lead versus um, 
uh, biventricular uh, defibrillator and patients with injection fraction between 36 and 50 percent will be randomized to a dual chamber pacemaker with a uh, his or left bundle branch lead against uh, patients with biventricular pacemaker. The primary outcome is uh, all-cause death or heart failure hospitalization and the pre primary safety endpoint is percentage of complications. This is a pragmatic clinical trial, so any patient that meets criteria for cardiac resynchronization therapy by current clinic, uh, North American clinical guidelines can be included in this clinical trial. Uh, the, the clinical trial was launched uh, recently on January 1st, um, and it has two phases. In the feasibility phase, we will uh, do a pilot enrollment of 60 patients that will start in September, October 2023. In the full-scale study, uh, in the first two years, we will enroll the remaining of the patients, and then each patient should have at least three years of follow-up. So, uh, as final thoughts, um, conduction system pacing seems to be promising as an alternative to biventricular pacing, but we need large randomized clinical trial to establish efficacy and safety, and we need the help of industry to um, design dedicated and improved leads and tools and update devices and algorithm. Finally, I would like to thank um, Dr. Ellen Bogan, my co-principal investigator, and Dr. Richard Holubkov, our um, independent biostatistician, and a large number of patients, investigators, and stakeholders for helping to um, put together this large clinical trial. Thank you. I'll be happy to take any questions.